Hi guys, how are you doing? So, like one of the videos that I have done in the past about um, misidentification of flat owls uh, in in bioacoustics research of Sasquatch, I have done it with canines, so wolves, coyotes, everything related. So today uh, we are talking about elk. And you all know what elk is. It's a, an enormous deer from North America. Um, and you guys probably are asking, mostly European uh, viewers or researchers, why I'm not talking about red deer. And I will address red deer in this video but it will be very easy to address and I will explain that to you guys later. So the North America um, Wapiti or elk, uh, it's, it's, called, it's called Servus Canadensis because late in, in, in some years ago it was splitted from the European red deer so they they have done some dna analysis and they they found out that uh, they were significant significantly uh, divergent from each other so they are re considered right now as separate species and you will um, perceive that even in terms of vocalization because they sound real different so I'm going to show you guys before I show you this paper uh, about the, um, the, the bioacoustics and the, the, vo the vocal tract of, of, of red deer. And this is, uh, this, this could be a problem in, in Sasquatch identification and, and, and acoustics in audio because they can produce some very flat howls also uh, mostly if they are far away and you don't um you you don't manage to get a good quality audio and you don't manage manage to get all all the all the owls from the beginning to the end okay so let me show you guys a video of um of a red deer, European red deer calling. You probably guys know because I, I usually put this as a as an outro on my video. Okay, so European red deer sound very different from elk. And in reality, European red deer don't produce those flat owls that you can uh, misidentify as as a Sasquatch, as a Sasquatch flat owl. However, if you if you hear this in the forest at night and you don't know where it is, you can look, you can think it is a growl, a very big growl, but just the red deer people. And I'm going to show you how the red deer sounds on a, on a spectrogram. So this is how the red deer looks. As you can see, you, you don't see any flattish owls because all of these, all of this area, it's the owl of the, of the, of the red deer. So I can put it again for you guys to listen. <laughs> See, no problem. And if you only catch this part of the of the of the audio, and those those lines here down here, they can look like very flat. They do not sound like a red ear. They will sound like this. They will sound like a lion <laughs> very far away but usually you will get the the 
the the the resonance it's it's so high on a on a red deer calling that you will get the, all at least a few of the of the vibrations of the harmonics and the um, that that are 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 that are constituting the 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 the, the call of the red deer okay so let's go again to our elk uh, paper so north american elk buggle vocalizations male and female buggle call structure and context so the term for the call of a male elk it's a buggle and um females can also buggle but we will speak about that so buggle calls of male north american elk servus elafus so this paper it's probably using later later terminology scientific latin terminology so they were using still elafus because american elk it's servus canadensis and the red deer european red deer it's servus elafus so the, we are not, scientific community is not using this name anymore. Our common sounds during fall in Canadian and United States Rocky Mountains. In contrast, buggle calls of female elk are rarely heard, but they were recorded. So we are going to listen to, to them uh, in, a while, in, uh, in a while. So we measured male elk buggle calls in Rocky Mountain National Park, Colorado, during autumn of 1998 and 99. And we measured female elk buggle calls on two Colorado elk ranches, so private establishments that raise elk for commercial purposes, during spring of 2001 and 2002. So, guys, females during spring. Female, uh, I, I highlighted the 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 the... the the, the the sentences that are most interesting for us. So female elk also have been noted to buggle, but it is very rare event occurring in the spring during the weeks when parturition occurs. So females during spring, males during autumn. So from August, September to late November, sometimes into December, that's very rare, but they can buggle also. And here you can see how the buggle looks. But let me advise you that elk has an enormous variation of buggles and how they look on a spectrograph. So you can see it very, very flat here and the harmonic very, very flat. So you can see it here at 2000, 2000 Hertz, but this will vary a lot. So multiple low frequency harmonics and formants, formants are the harmonics, that ranged from an average minimum of, of uh, 11, for 11, 1147 hertz in the first formant to a maximum of 4672 hertz in the fifth formant. So they, they can make five harmonics, five formants, that can range almost to 5,000 hertz. Um, and here you can see, like the legend says, comparison of buggles from a female North American elk uh, in A, so non-aggressive contest, to B, aggressive contest, uh, with low frequency harmonics similar to male buggle calls. So they can look very like, much like the, the male and some of the males can look like this. So very, very flat, as you can see, if you guys remember from the last video about canines and how they can look like flat owls from Sasquatch, these ones are, the elk are one of the animals that can produce very flat owls. So you can see them here starting on the first formant, that is the one generally with more, more energy, at 1,500 and, and hertz, around that, second formant around um, 3,000 hertz, so, and so on. So I think this is it. So, okay. So let's, let us see put this down here so let us see the okay 
a map of Hulk in North America. So as you can see, North America elk is it's mostly distributed around uh, in the in the west coast. So Washington, Oregon, uh, Colorado, California, Montana, uh, Idaho, and there are a few populations, however small, uh, in Kentucky, in Pennsylvania. Uh, West Virginia also have a few on the south and some smaller populations almost around every state. Uh, North Carolina, okay, Tennessee. So these are one of the biggest ones from the East Coast. And I, I, I hear a lot of, of people uh, on the web speaking about elk and Sasquatch and how, how Sasquatch are always where elk are. And and they, 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 they see it like a relation without one for sure it is they see it as a, a, um, a relation that, that uh, um, Sasquatch is, is using elk for food as a, as a food resource and it, it probably is but uh, I will show you another another map, and we are going to focus on the west coast. So here around California, and we are going to see a Bigfoot map. So this is a Bigfoot map. All the areas that color are the areas with the biggest density of reports. The other ones that are only the satellite image, it, they, they, they don't mean that they, they, they don't have reports and sightings, they have, but they are lowest, they are they have lowest lower numbers. So if I'm if I if I zoom in, I can see dots and sightings, but they are not uh they, they are they are they are not enough to form this high density areas like this Umatilla National Forest, for example. If you zoom in, you will see a lot more. And here on the west coast, around Portland, Olympia, Seattle, you will see a lot when we zoom in. So th this is, a, this is a, a map showing the, by colors the density of reports and the density the, po the possible density of Sasquatch. It doesn't mean that there, there are more Sasquatches, but it could it could also mean that there are more people in an area there are a lot of Sasquatches. So looking here at California, you can see the area around Sacramento to the east. So in the in the Sierras. And you can see there are a lot of reports. So probably a lot of Bigfoot here. But if you manage if you go to the elk map, you will see that to the east of Sacramento, there are not elk. So you don't need elk to have Sasquatch. So point one. So, but this is not what I uh, was, uh, this is not what, what about the, the, the video is, is uh, I'm, I'm, that I'm doing this video. So, we are going to to listen now to some elk and i'm going to show you guys uh, okay. i'm going to show you guys some variations of male elks let me start on the first ones so we can do it visually and with audio also. So this is one of the, you can see it around 1000 Hertz, then various various formants or harmonics that are going up till more than 4000 4, Hertz. I can put you guys here. Okay. So another one, very different now. And here you can see very, very, a very faint one to the distance, completely different, much more roundish 
And this will be uh, an important uh, vocalization or call to compare in the end of this video that I will tell you guys about later, but we are going to listen to it. It sounds almost like a whistle. Or it sounds like almost like I will I will I will enhance it. So it sounds almost like a girl screaming or a chill or children screaming. See? So visually we can see a lot of difference on this elk and how they sound. Okay, so let me show you another one. So these ones are very flat, so they 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 are worthwhile seeing uh, for comparison with 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 Sasquatch uh, flat owls. However, they are completely different from wolves and canines and and coyotes because if you notice, they are these these flat owls are around 1,000 or 1,200 hertz. And wolves generally go around 500, 600. Coyotes can go to 800, sometimes 900. But, and even the, the timber is, it's, it's, it's different. So they are, these ones are easy to understand that they are not wolves. But if you have some calls, if you do some audio on, uh, on your area and you have to check for the sonogram and you have to check how um how is um, so where is the range of the of the flat owl that you recorded and you will compare it with my video or with the values that I'm giving to you so around uh, 1200 hertz and you can see that this varies so here around 1200 hertz. So this one is a little bit different. Let me try to show you guys another one. So the flat howl here is around 2000 hertz. So very much different. So we, we are going to listen to it. The pitch is higher. So you cannot say that all elks um, buggle the same. They have a huge variation. And when you are analyzing your videos and your Sasquatch flat owl, supposed Sasquatch flat owls, you have to, to take this in consideration. And you have to remember this because elk can vary a lot. So another one. So look, look, look at this one. It it only it 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 seems that has no beginning and no end, just completely flat line. Far away. Uh, remember what I've said in the beginning that far away you can miss the beginning and you can miss the end. And the same for canines, you can miss the beginning of the owl of the wolf and the and the end. And you you, you are lo you are always you only getting the flat. So you have to take to take this into consideration. I will enhance this one for you guys to listen better. Maybe I I have over <laughs> see so be careful with these ones. So more examples, more flat towels, very flat towels. These ones, these ones are sound very different. They have a lot of vibration on the throat of the elk. See, completely different. So the the buggle is very different. So and you can see one after another. They 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 look very different. Even if for you they sound almost the same, they can look very different. So you have to keep that in mind, the variation of the elk buggle. So another one here. 
another one with a very flat owl around 2000 hertz another more buggle calls and look at this one look at this one the the flattish it's not that flattish so the the the, the other one next it's super flat but this one is very round and this one is very important for we are going to compare in the end. So let me let 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 me show you guys. It looks like a whistle or or a scream. I'm going to enhance it. Okay. Put it normal again. Okay. So this is a lot, a lot of male buggles. I <laughs> there are a lot more on this, on this, on this file, um, and we are going now to see female elk. So cow elk, and how they look and sound. little bit more gain for you guys to listen but they also have buggles like males as you can see and I can assure you this is a female I'm going to put here the video for you guys to see this female performing the same vocalization, the same body. Yeah. Okay. So, but they can perform other vocalizations. But but they oscillate a lot more. The buggle, it's it's very different. Although they can do this buggle like the, this male buggle uh, or buggle like um, male like. Sorry. <laughs> so um, okay. So let me go here. And push this one to the bottom. So uh, today uh, I was on Facebook and in a in a group that usually deals with with bioacoustics uh, of Sasquatch. Um, someone put a question, and that question led me to led me today to to do this video i decided to do this video mainly because of that question i i thought it would be nice for people to 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 have this kind of resource so and since elk could be a problem and it 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 was or it, it is a problem in this particular example that I'm, that i'm going to show you guys so this this video make me a lot of sense to make. So we can go to these to the YouTube. So in this page, from from uh, from Carrie. So on on YouTube she 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 is with with the name Crypto Carrie. I hope Carrie doesn't mind. I use her video as an example. And 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 seeing the video, I think Carrie can also understand what I what I what I told you told her before. So let's listen to a video. She she's she's on West Virginia around the first days of December, and she she climbed with a friend to the top of a ridge, doing some research. So let's listen. So at uh, one minute fifty eight. 
she she had a, a thing that she called a whistle that she didn't knew what it was. She she even thought it could be her friend that was doing that, but it is not. It's it's not from from her. It's not from him. The the that that whistle. It's 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 done by a third party. But let li let's listen. Oh, yeah, I gotta come up here. Can't see very good over here. Did you guys got it? At one minute fifty-eight, I think I have the sound on the maximum. So, um, I extracted the the file from the video. So we are going to see it on on this on this, uh, the the spectrograph and the spectrogram. We are going to see it. So uh, one more time, thank you, Carol. I hope you don't mind. I do this video. Uh, go and see the other videos of Carrie. Give give her a like. She's researching in an awesome area that I'm so jealous that I've never been. I've never been to North America. Uh, you, you guys probably don't know, but I've never been into the North American uh, continent. I've been to Africa, to Asia, in Europe. I live in Europe, but never been to, Amer to, the, to, the, to the other side of the Atlantic. Unfortunately, someday I will. But one of the places that I would love to go, it's uh, West Virginia, Ohio. And I will show you guys why. Because... Uh, we are going to see again the, the Bigfoot map and I'm going to show you I'm going to show you the East Coast so the the odd spot Bigfoot odd spot on the East Coast you can see it so the, 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 the areas with more energy like so with whitish yellow red are the zones with a lot of sightings it's Pennsylvania Ohio and uh, here, the, the north part of West Virginia, it's on blue. But guys, don't don't be don't you you don't be fooled. If if I zoom in in West Virginia, there are a lot of sightings also here in the Monongahela National Forest. This, I I think this place has a lot of Bigfoot, but it it. It shows here like a, a huge spot in the middle, a huge area that doesn't seem to have sightings. But because there are no people, if you don't have any people, you don't have any sightings. If you go, if you are going to the south of the south to uh, southwest to the Pennsylvania state, you have an amazing amount of Bigfoot sightings. But if you if you're going to see if you see a map of human density in Pennsylvania and East Ohio, you have a lot of people living there also. Uh, I can show you here and put a map on the screen showing you guys that, the, the density of people that lives here and the lower density of people that lives to the west of Monongahela National Forest. This place I think this place it, it's amazing and you can see you zoom in and you can see it's 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 forest for miles and miles and miles and miles so someday someday I will go there for sure so uh we were we were we were at um, the the uh, at Carrie's YouTube seeing a video and now I'm going to show you guys I'm going to show you guys. Uh, we saw okay. I'm going to show you guys the the one minute and fifty eight seconds mark at uh, the audio that I took from the video from Carrie. So you can see here some kind of a flatish whistle owl call. This is what Carrie uh, recorded beneath it it's her voice and in the end it's the voice from it's the voice from her from her friend so let's listen to it 
Can't see very good over here. Yeah, my house right down there. Okay. Did you guys hear it? I'm going to increase the gain again for you guys. And you can see that there is a gap in the flat out. This doesn't happen usually on elk, and it doesn't happen in wolf, neither in coyotes. They coyotes and wolves, they if they want to maintain the flat owl, they don't stop it and then they, 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 they are not able to continue on the other side a few seconds or a few uh, milliseconds later at the same pitch. Uh, you can do it, you can see it in elk's sonograms or, or spectrograms, but they usually don't stop. What they do is that the performance or the the or the vibration of their throats takes place in that gap. So they, they never stop. They just slightly uh, change the, the timber and the, the and the vocal tract and the, the, the air coming out of their or their or their throats. So it's it's amazing. But you are not seeing that here. You can see that there are not vibrations between uh, the, the the beginning of the flat owl and the end. So let's listen to it again with with an increased gain. Can't see it. Well, it's too too much. It distorts a lot. Can't see it. So let, let's try to listen to it with uh, with a filter. Just. We are going to listen just the, the the whistle, the call, the flat owl, what whatever you you, are, you call it. The problem is that um, she recorded this in the middle of West um, uh, Virginia, so. There are no elks in the middle of West Virginia, and there are hundred of hundred. They are a, a couple hundred miles to the south, and the population is not big enough. It, it's a very recent population that uh, came came from Kentucky. They came to the north and they entered the, the West Virginia border. So there are not many. I think I I, I was looking into the numbers. In some official sites from North America, it's like 250 individuals at most. So let's listen to it again, so just for you guys to remember. Oh, sorry. So... I cannot say this is the, the range it's the same it's almost 1000 or 1200 hertz elk don't do these gaps between without reverberation from their throat their throat it it looks like a scream it looks like something that you can hear from sasquatch it's not a canine it's not a coyote it's not a wolf uh, so what is it? Sometimes we cannot even tell, and we we have we we cannot give answers to everything we can compare. I do not have answers for Carrie. I just want to show you guys that these kind of questions, these quite this kind of problems, sometimes are we are we are we we can't solve them but um what i want to do is to compare this whistle to the ones that i showed you from elk before and i'm going to show you those ones from the mail so this one let 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 us hear again It's it it seems higher pitch because it is it 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 is two thousand four hundred hertz. The other one was twelve hundred hertz. But if if it if it goes if it goes if I took the gain off, 
like the the like the um, the the call is very far away that's what you are going to listen so now it looks more like a whistle than like than a call of a, an elk um and that this could happen this could happen so let me show you guys i'm going to change the spectrogram to this one so lost elk calf sound so now we are going i'm going to show you the video so this is a video of uh, a supposed last uh, lost elk calf and he's probably calling for her mother and look how it uh, in the first 10 seconds it, uh, around I think uh, around the ninth second I don't know sure sorry let me just see so six, six. so around the, around the nine the, 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 the nine seconds far away you are able or not to listen to a whistle very 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 close that very closely resembles the whistle from Carrie's video and I'm going to show you the whistle so this is the call did you hear it I'm going to put it without the calf and without putting the gain so it's 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 very it's far away in the background so let's listen to it again so let's put here a box I'm going to increase the gain a little bit. But look, it's it's so far away. It has so 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 less energy than the one that uh, that Carrie uh, recorded. But you can see you can still see the second harmonic. See? And on her whistle, you cannot see harmonics despite the energy and the recording, it's pretty good. So that's very strange because all the elk, elk almost always, unless they are so far, so far away, they almost always produce harmonics in, in, the, in the audio. But if you put the gain very, very, if, even here, I'm, I'm putting the gain so so low that see the second harmonic went away but if i put it to play you can you cannot even manage to listen to it yeah it's mute so for for the the for the whistle that that is on audio on the audio of um, of Gary's audio to perform like this, it it would have to be mute also, or almost like that, and it is not. So I'm going to put the gain the gain again for you guys to, to listen. And I'm going to show you guys again Carrie's whistle. Okay, so Sometimes when I use multiple Okay, so some difficulties, software difficulties. I have to close it and I'm going to and I'm going to try to open again um, the whistle from Carrie. 
Okay. Let's see if it's working now. I hope so. So here it is. Let's see. Can't see very good. Yeah, right. Okay, let's take her voice out and listen only to the whistle. It, it, it sounds a little bit strange, so we are going to select everything, but not her voice. So we 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 should have some noise for to compare and to sound it then to sound natural. See? You can still listen to Carrie's voice because her reverberation, her, her um, harmonics go further up here to the to the 2600 hertz you can see these 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 dark areas it's it's still reverberation and harmonics from her own voice um but it's very similar guys very similar now let's compare it again with the calf A little bit more gain. So And look, they, they sound so similar and visually they are so different because this one from the calf, from the uh, the Hulk, it's so flat, so flat. And the one uh, that Carrie recorded as more like a wavy, a wavy um, line, it's more, more wavy than the other one, but it, it sounds so similar. but visually it's so different so in the end i cannot say and that this is an elk it's probably not an elk um the the timber is also different from an elk and even using these kind of tools advanced tools and spectrograms and spectrographs sometimes you have to check other other type of information like distribution of similar species that can sound the same as I have done here with the elk example. So is this an elk? Is this something else, Some something very strange on the audio? I let you guys uh, think about it. I really don't have an answer for you. I'm just um presenting to you guys some of the hypotheses and how to deal with them and let's hope that uh, uh Carrie solves her problem maybe she can spot an elk on that area i don't think so that's not the case so we can think that if Sasquatch likes to mimic the he, he, he is is a trickster, he will do and he, he he does things like this one. So there are other things on the audio of the video that sounded to me strange. So that's probably uh, that's probably worthwhile ch uh, worthwhile checking. Okay, guys. So I hope you like this video uh, a little bit uh, a little bit more information it's it's never enough so um that's not all roses uh, researching sasquatch there are problems and problems must be solved solved so I'm letting you guys know some of the tools some of 
and some of the problems that you may encounter. And I hope they, this video helps you guys. Okay. So bye-bye and see you guys on the next video.